Okay guys, and now we're gonna repeat the three main hormones that regulate calcium metabolism. And the first hormone is PTH. The second one is calcitriol. Or in other words, the most effective form of vitamin D. And the third one is calcitonin. And here are gonna be the organs or tissues that they're, they are affecting. And these are bones. This is going to be GIT tract. And especially then we have to think of intestines. And over here, I mean duodenum and jejunum mainly because that's where there is active resorption of calcium. And in ileum and in the, in the large intestine, that's rather passive resorption of calcium. And then we're going to think of kidneys. And the, the last one, this is a symbol for blood levels of calcium and how they change the blood levels. Okay, and so PTH, first of all, PTH is responsible for resorption of bones. So bone resorption. But there's a big difference in terms of secretion. If the secretion is continuous and PTH is high, this really stimulates bone resorption. But watch out. If there are peaks of PTH that go up and down, suddenly by, for example, injections, this means bone anabolism, so actually creation of bone. And this is what you use later in osteoporosis, for example. So watch out. But for, for today, the examples over here are for continuous high PTH secretion. And actually how the PTH works it works through Rankle system, so and it activates the osteoblast, which then through Rankle system activate the osteoclasts. And osteoclasts are actually changed macrophages that resorb the bone. So remember, continuous increased secretion of PTH means bone resorption. Well, how does PTH work on intestines? Actually, indirectly, and the indirect effect is through vitamin D. So calcitriol. Remember, this is indirect effect. Indirect effect through through calcitriol. And we're going to talk about this later. But what does it mean? That means that the PTH stimulates in the kidneys the final hydroxylation of the vitamin D to the most effective form, and then calcitriol is the one which acts in intestines and increases phosphate and calcium resorption. So this is the indirect effect of PTH. But there is no direct effect of the PTH on intestine. Well, next is the PTH effect on kidneys. And over here in kidneys, the PTH increases calcium reabsorption, but blocks the phosphate reabsorption. So the Phosphate reabsorption is decreased. So we are getting rid of phosphate under the PTH control in, in kidneys. And what's the final effect? Well, then PTH in the blood increases calcium levels, but decreases phosphate levels. Okay. And then calcitriol. Well, calcitriol increases mineralization of bones. Bones. Then in GIT tract, it increases resorption of calcium or absorption and also phosphate. In the kidneys, it's the same in the calcium. There is also increased reabsorption and the same accounts for phosphate. So again, reabsorption of phosphate. And the final outcome in blood is that uh, calcitriol increases calcium levels in the blood and also phosphate levels. And the last example is um, calcitonin. Calcitonin decreases bone resorption. So blocks it actually. This is what you use 
when, for example, there is a there could be metastasis in bones, and basically, if there is hypercalcemia, calcitonin is the drug of choice if you want to decrease the hypercalcemia very fast in in few hours. And typically, with metastasis in bones or let's say in tumors that stimulate bone resorption, use calcitonin as a as the one which decreases the hypercalcemia very fast. And at the same time, you give biphosphonates, which block the resorption of the bones also, and they keep it like stable, they block it stably, but the effect comes like in first or second day. So first you give a bolus of calcitonin, and also you give biphosphonates continuously to protect the bone against resorption. So, so these two are drugs of choice when the resorption of bones is uncontrollable and extreme. Then calcitonin also blocks absorption of uh, calcium in the GIT tract and also blocks reabsorption or decreases reabsorption of calcium and phosphates in the kidneys. So they are both decreased. And the final effect of calcitonin on blood levels is that it decreases calcium in blood and also phosphates in blood. Okay? So, let's go on. So, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And as always, check the description below for supplementary questions and other materials.